Next up, I wanted to slip this in because we have to take a look at a global macro perspective about what's going on around us. There's this question that was asked, um, what do I think is going to happen in the next year to three years uh, as far as like cryptocurrency? And I said, well, I think there's gonna be a big dip uh, because in the traditional market, there are institutional investors and institutional investors are also uh, making their way into our market. And the problem with the traditional world is that there's things like this going on where people are going bankrupt, people are seeking federal bailouts, there are printing of money, and I think there's a bubble that's about to pop. And when that bubble pops, you're gonna see some of those players, not all, but some of those players go, you know what? I need to be liquid, I need to pay off my debts. And the only thing that's open 24-7 is cryptocurrency, and they're gonna pull that out. Out. But the strong hands, the ones that know exactly where this is going, and there's a lot more of those institutional investors that see where things are going, they're going to keep their money in. So we're going to see a little bit of a dip, and it's going to take off like a rocket because they're going to say, you know what, we can't trust this fiat, this uh, this Federal Reserve, this uh, US dollar. I think we should go into something that has a quantitative hardening, not a quantitative easing. And that is cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So this is what I see uh, just looking at the big picture. So struggling hotel owners, uh, some with Trump ties seek federal ballot. I don't care about the Trump ties. What I really care about is that there are multi-billion dollar hotel chains that are going to default in their loans. And that's going to have a ripple effect. So Thomas J. Barrick Jr., billionaire investor, has struggled to keep up with payment of almost $2 billion in Wall Street debt. He used to buy a collection of more than 160 hotels. Monty Bennett is in a similar tough spot after he recently halted payments owed on the $2.6 billion worth of Wall Street debt used to acquire his own hotel collection. And there's a term called Im imminent monetary default is a term a Wall Street research firm used this summer to describe more than $300 million in debt on a luxury hotel in Austin controlled by Doug Manchester. So of course, this is all related to COVID-19. People are traveling less. They don't need hotels. What happens to hotels? They start to close down or they start to default on their loans. Now the bank's like, well, I'm not getting any money. So what do we do? Well, we had a bailout. We're going to need another bailout. And then guess what's going to happen? We need another bailout and another bailout. And now all of a sudden you have so many hands out. There's only so much money you can print before you're just like, you know what? You guys have to figure it out yourself. And uh, I know some people say, no, no, no. Uh, modern, modern monetary theory. We can print... Uh, to oblivion and it won't matter. Well, I'm here to tell you, there is a point when you just can't do that anymore. And I think that we are coming up to that, that point. So uh, this is what I see in the macro uh, view. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But again, I don't see this as a very positive outlook in the short term. Long term, this is great for cryptocurrency digital assets because the more uncertainty, the better it is for us. Let's move on.